Same eyes, same bone structure, same fabulous nose. Well, you could pass for my twin. Yeah, I totally agree. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hey kids, welcome back to another episode of this movie was literally impossible to find so I had to order the VHS for $50 on eBay but then by the time I got it I realized it was a demo version and these super annoying words would scroll across the screen so I had to return it and pay another $85 for this VHS tape and then convert it with my Vidbox software and old VCR from Goodwill onto my new computer so that I could review this movie for you today. Yeah, kids, you guessed it. Today we're taking a deep dive into model behavior. The highly requested and highly elusive 2000s made-for-TV movie about two 16-year-old girls, one a famous model, one a hideous loser with glasses and a ponytail, who switch lives and mess everything up in the process. Starring Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake's afro, missing mirror, world's ugliest bathroom, bull cut Betty, 90s cup, Milk, Bird Lady, Walmart Spice Girls, and Kathy Lee Gifford. Oh yeah, she's on the cover. Hi, Kathy. <gasps> looks like love is out of sync. <laughs> Jay Timberlake looks so awky. He looks so stiff. <laughs> I'm excited about this one, guys, because as far as like movies about the main character switching lives is concerned, model behavior is like right up there with the Lizzie McGuire movie, possibly even better. I mean, sure, they both feature a creepy little brother with a camcorder, a loser swapping with a celebrity, dim-witted parents, and bad musical numbers, but only one of them has Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Am I right? So guys, put on your glasses. Ow, I bent my fake eyelash. And let's talk about model behavior. Friends, it's that time of year again. It's that time where we're all singing that one song from Napoleon Dynamite. Mom is here. Because it's because fall is here. Do you have a pack schedule this fall? Well, HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of up to 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items all delivered right to your door. That's right, kids. Cozy up with some delicious sweets this fall and get the whole family involved with HelloFresh's limited edition kid-friendly baking kits. <gasps> that sounds so fun. Are you on a budget this fall? I declare bankruptcy that's okay because hellofresh is actually 72 percent cheaper than like going out to eat at a restaurant or grocery shopping actually you know some of us spend the entire summer indoors editing videos because it's so swelteringly hot and like our thighs rub together and stuff and we're not like super into that so fall is actually when i like to be more active and try to you know try to try to, try to slow down a little bit try to shed some of those summer <laughs> summer pounds I put on. So what I really love is that HelloFresh can help you reach your health goals. I recently switched to the Fit and Wholesome plan, which makes it so much easier for me to eat healthy without sacrificing any flavor. <laughs> You can customize anything from HelloFresh that you want. You can switch the protein, switch out the sides, add a veggie if you want. It's never been easier to eat your way. So if you are interested in checking out HelloFresh, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use the code JamieSaid65. Switching it up on you today. For 65% off HelloFresh plus free shipping. Once again, my friends, that is HelloFresh.com and use code Jamie said 65 Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And now back to the show. Hey kids, we're back. So Alex is your typical like late 90s, early 2000s female tween protagonist in that she's extremely beautiful, smart, creative, hardworking, and loving, and therefore is a complete and total loser, as made evident by the glasses and the ponytail. Disgusting! So she's at this party with her best friend Sharon, and Sharon is trying to get her to talk to her crush, Eric Singer, who is a very important character in this movie, so pay close attention. But Alex just doesn't feel like she can approach him. She's not confident, you know? If I didn't block his view in AP bio, Eric Singer wouldn't even know I existed. And Sharon's like, no girl, we came here with a mission, okay, and we are not leaving until you were Eric's date to the fall ball. And you're not leaving this party until you're officially Eric's date. Alex musters up the courage to go talk to him and it goes pretty well. Wolf. 
I'm sorry? Move. Oh, right. I feel like you didn't really need for her to move, but okay. Move. Classic. Okay, so that is mean girl Mindy. Mindy's mean. Again, because Alex is such a loser and has glasses. <laughs> so she's all sad about her interaction with Eric. She heads home and we meet her brother, Josh, who has a camcorder permanently attached to his hand. He's very Matt from Lizzie McGuire-esque. Wait, was that Lizzie McGuire's little brother's name? But anyway, he's like that kid. He films his sister all the time. Also, this is the guy who played Sean from Degrassi, which kind of trips me out a little bit. <laughs> but anywho, the movie then transitions and we meet our other main character, Janine, who happens to look literally identical to Alex. They are literal identical twins, even though they're not related. Janine lives obviously a completely different lifestyle than Alex. She doesn't go to high school because she's rich and famous. She's a famous model. No glasses, no ponytail. Has a mom who's like obsessed with her being skinny. Miss Adams will have her usual order, please. Steamed broccoli and brown rice. So basically her mom is Yolanda Hadid. How are you? I'm feeling really weak. I have a couple of almonds. Chew them really well. Hot almonds. Yes, make sure you don't eat the whole entire almond, you fat pig. Also noteworthy is that Janine's mom is played by Kathy Lee Gifford, which has no bearing whatsoever on this video. But if I don't mention it, the comment section will be full of like, no mention of Kathy Lee Gifford. Put some respect on her name. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> So Janine loves to just kind of hang out in her room, which is super dope, by the way. She likes watching Food Network, you know, cause she's not allowed to like eat real actual food. And she catches some sort of entertainment news segment about herself. There's no stopping this red hot superstar. Janine even has the undivided attention of fellow teen supermodel, Jason Sharp. That's right guys, Justin Timberlake, you know, the pop star. Uh. He is in this movie playing, you guessed it, a pop star. That is completely false. He is playing a supermodel, which we just heard them say in that previous clip. Fellow teen supermodel. Isn't that adorable? It's bringing me back to the long shot days, you know, where he made those goofy clown faces. <laughs> so then we cut back over to Alex, the loser with glasses. She is at breakfast and we learn a little bit more about her character. So she's a fashion designer. She's got a sketchbook portfolio thing. <laughs> Those are good. It looks like she just got an acceptance letter to some sort of fashion school program thing. I'm in the final round to get into the Fashion and Design Institute summer program. Seems like it's a pretty big honor. You can kind of tell by the dad's reaction. That's great, Alex. Yeah, I think her dad would rather her just work at his catering business for the rest of her life, you know, instead of pursuing her passion. Cutting back over to model Janine, they show a little bit more of her character and she's kind of a uh, you know, a B word. Hey, careful you oh so you clawed the latte. Are you freaking kidding? Oh, and meet Janine's assistant, Monique. Their relationship is extremely dramatized for the sake of this movie. They have her be excessively mean to Monique for no reason. And Monique is like this really sweet, coy, shy, uh, spineless, withering, whining wimp. Just nuke the Java for like 10 seconds and we'll call it even, okay? <sighs> Thank you, Janine. I will never forget this. So Janine's mom, Kathy Lee Gifford, is uh, going out of town for a couple weeks. You just be a good girl while I'm gone. Because her little brother, Max, who is one in a million, by the way, he just became a model too, and he booked a gig in Aruba or something. Enjoy Aruba, you two. And Max, break a leg, an arm, and maybe even a neck. Love you too, babe. Fun fact, this movie is this actor's only act credit. He has never been in any other movie, but yet still got invited to be a guest on Celebrity Family Feud. So I did a little digging and it turns out this is Kathy Lee Gifford's actual son. Nepotism. So as I mentioned before, Alex's dad owns a catering company and one night he and Alex happen to be catering an event that Janine is attending. It's Janine's book signing. Her book looks pretty good. It's called Janine Adams, A Model, A Life. That's a solid book title. I've Actually want that to be in my Twitter bio. I can see it now. Jamie French, a person that exists on the internet. A life. Hey, wait a minute. That strange girl holding a tray is my identical twin, but with glasses and a ponytail. Better put my hors d'oeuvre in this guy's cup. Okay guys, are you ready for the doppelgangers to dramatically meet each other in early 2000s tween fashion? Oh! By the way, I forgot to tell you guys, this movie is a true story. 
Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. It's based on the prince and the pauper. You speak well, Florence Ragged. Somehow, by some miracle, Janine realizes this girl looks exactly like me. No idea how she realized that through her glasses, though. You know, I mean, can you guys tell I'm me? Exactly. You can't. Anyway, Janine, like I said, sees it. Alex has no idea what she's talking about. It's almost uncanny. What is? Uh, how similar you look to Alicia Silverstone, obviously. So Janine pulls Alex into the physical ugliest bathroom I've ever seen. Red, yellow, blue, and dusty mall. I could not come up with a worse color combination if my life depended on it. Uh, but anyway, they come up with this plan to switch lives. How would you like to trade places with me? I felt like Janine really seemed like she wanted the switcheroo a lot more than Alex did. She really wants to know what it's like to be one of the normal girls, you know? What's it like to eat in a cafeteria? Uh? See, and the scene cuts away right there, and I wish they had shown Alex's answer to this question. I would have had a lot to say. What's it like to eat in a cafeteria? Oh, the cafeteria? Uh, let me think. Well, lunch ladies, super mean. Okay, they all have egg breath and gum disease. They wear these brown orthopedic shoes, you know, like for their gout, and they wear these hairnet things, but like their little hair still sprinkle all over the food sometimes. Uh, what else? We eat chicken patty on bun, uh, bread tangles of pizza. I personally, I usually don't have lunch money, so I just eat pickles and ranch like from the salad bar. Speaking of pickles, there's tons of pickles all over the ceiling of our cafeteria because people just like toss them up there and they get stuck and every now and then when you're eating, a pickle will drop <laughs> into your yogurt. <laughs> but I eat it anyway. Janine continues to push this idea of them switching lives and she really sells it. She makes her life sound amazing. For crying out loud, I consider ice an essential food group. Mom's orders cuts down on the cravings. <laughs> Don't show that scene to Yolanda Hadid. She'll be taking notes. And then you gotta get back on your diet though. So Janine proposes. We'll, uh, we'll switch for a week until Friday. You really think we can pull this off? Well, considering you're literally identical and happen to have the exact same voice, I sure do. And there you have it guys, the life switcheroo begins when we come back. Hello world, this is me. Life should be. Oh my gosh, I had no idea you were attractive. Oh my, my eyes. Oh, Janine got so ugly. Like not as ugly as this shiny plastic red curtain under the bathroom sink, but still disgusting. They switch places right then and there at the book signing in the bathroom and uh, nobody suspects a thing. Why would they? Because they are literally identical. And then after that, it's pretty much all fun and games for a while. They head to each other's homes. Janine finds Alex's bead stash and like Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Is that her dad's? Alex dances with Janine's car that's parked inside of her room for some reason. She does a pole spin. Janine's shaking the sheets. They're having a blast. I too shake sheets when I get excited. Yeah! I love Janine's reaction to her new family. She's just dying over it. Wow, it's just like the 50s. Alex's mom makes her this delicious breakfast, which is a huge upgrade, right? From the ice and broccoli she's eating at home with Yolanda. Or, I mean, Kathy Lee Gifford. So obviously she's gonna devour the whole meal, right? The girl is starving. Well, I don't want to be late for homeroom. Bye, Dad. Guys, have we ever talked about this before? I know we've talked about the 90s tween bang tuck and the 90s tween, uh, what was the other thing? The 90s tween sock hop, the 90s tween forehead touch, the 90s tween circle walk, the 90s tween one second long phone conversations. I don't remember what it was, but in addition to all of those things, I don't think we've ever talked about the 90s tween two bite breakfast. <laughs> Gotta go, Mom. I think it's our first time experiencing this together, you guys. This is a special moment. Janine heads to school. It is her first experience as a normal high school student. She meets Sharon. And all I need is a real killer entrance. You're telling me. Do I know you? I feel like this would have been pertinent information for Janine to know. I know they pulled the old switcheroo pretty spur of the moment and pretty quickly, but I feel like describing what your best friend looks like to the person who's gonna take over and assume your identity is like kind of important. So Janine is super super confident. She's immediately walking down the halls, flirting with all the dudes, but they are kind of all disgusted by her because A, they think she's Alex and B, glasses, obviously. And Sharon's like, dude, Alex, 
What's gotten into you? You just can't go around waving at two of the hottest guys in the 12th grade. Oh, you, you mean these two 30-year-olds? <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes mean Mindy. Next time you attempt to hit on Eric Singer, you might want to check with his girlfriend first. <laughs> Hey, her shirt matches the bathroom sink curtain from the book signing. <laughs> Gross. Anywho, the point of this scene is that we find out that Eric Singer, remember the guy from earlier, Alex's crush? Mindy is his girlfriend. Meanie Mindy, yeah, they're going steady. When I'm through with that little ball of fluff, there'll be plenty available. Why is this movie so beige? I've never reviewed a movie. So beige. So she gets the class where she's never seen a stapler before. I don't know if you knew this, but models uh, don't use staplers, right, Gigi? Have you ever used a stapler? Uh, no, actually. Exactly. Uh, she also doesn't attempt at all to act like a normal student, nor does she seem to care at all about Alex's reputation. Your snitty tone is most unappreciated and clearly a transparent defense mechanism for your inability to even begin to relate to your students. Well, don't just stand there. Go teach. This is where it kind of started to throw me off a little bit. Okay, you know, Janine is the other female protagonist in our story, but the writers didn't really give us any reason to root for her or even to like her. She's super mean to people and they kind of made it a good, hilarious thing, you know? Hide on, man. Yeah, high five, my fellow high school student. <laughs> we students in our uncle clothes find it cool when girls disrespect our teacher in front of everyone. <laughs> Cut back over to Alex. There's gonna be a lot of that. A lot of cutting back and forth between Alex and Janine. Don't get it twisted. Just like Wish Upon a Star, you know the rule. But anyway, Alex is enjoying her life as a supermodel and it's the most moment we've all been waiting for since you first clicked on this video all those minutes ago. She's about to run into someone. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be me. Pick me up, all right? Janine? Is that you? All right, so you're still not talking to me, but, but trust me, I'll find a way to make this up to you, okay? I promise. Guys, fun fact. This was Justin Timberlake's film debut, and I have a feeling it was he that paid someone a lot of money to make this film disappear from the internet, and therefore it was he who made me have to spend $85 on the VHS via eBay, so thanks a lot, Justin. <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh, that cup. The cup that bears the sacred moth. Mark of the millennium. The only mark more sacred than the letter Z A P written upon the back of the hand. If you see either of these marks, you've met a fellow millennial. And the two of you must battle to the death. And whoever is the first to fumble shall perish. No, I'm just kidding, but seriously, I had some cups like that here at one point. Found them on Amazon. And I kept telling my employees not to use them because they're supposed to be props. And uh, they all disappeared, so way to go, team. Anywho, Janine sees Eric and Mindy enjoy their rainbow drink with an excessively long straw and she decides it's time to go over there and let them know that if they want to play hardball she's game because you never know when your milk's gonna turn on you i'm about sick of teenagers getting milk on each other in these movies you know why because i'm running out of puns for the speech bubbles okay also who made that noise in the background <laughs> I really like how Eric is just hysterically <laughs> laughing that his girlfriend just got an entire carton of milk dumped on her. Hey Eric, got milk? Um, I did have milk, but you just dumped it all over Mindy. Now Mindy's all milky. Thankfully, Mindy's best friend is there to lightly dab her shoulder and the side of her hair. <laughs> Don't put the tissue where the milk is. So yeah, again, Janine, not really a nice person. Like I get it, Mindy was also mean, but the milk was extremely excessive. Isn't that like considered battery? I think it's battery. It's excessive. Even if Mindy did sit there perfectly still awaiting the entire thing to be dumped out. Sorry guys, I don't like Janine, okay? Sue me, okay? Do you guys like her? Are you into how her character acts? Oh, gotta go. Save this for me. How about now? You still like her? Exactly. You know, as much as Janine's character really grinds my gears, her little story was so much more entertaining than Alex's. <laughs> Literally nothing's happening over in Alex land apart from her becoming friends with Monique. <laughs> But meanwhile, all those guys that were disgusted by Janine before, um, now they're all super into her. Like for example, locker guy that always has the red sweatshirt tied around his waist, he's feeling her now. Button up guy from earlier, uh, Eric. Hey, hey, wait a minute. 
You busy Saturday night? These bros, they just can't resist. You know, they can't resist the allure of a girl who bullies her teachers and classmates, even with glasses and a ponytail. So Janine's got a date with Eric Singer and Alex has a date with Justin Timberlake. Or, sorry, what's his character name again? Jason. Jason. Jason! Sorry, what is it? Jason. Okay, Jacob, got it. <laughs> so the girls hop on the phone and they decide to delay going back to their normal lives <laughs> because they're both having so much fun living each other's best life, you know? Well, during this conversation, Alex's little brother Josh is sneaking up the stairs, eavesdropping. Next Saturday it is. See you later, Alex. Ciao, Janine. So it's the night of both girls' big dates and the guys end up taking them to the same restaurant. <laughs> What are the odds? Josh is hot on their trail the whole time. He's got his big old camcorder. I'll let him over explain his plan. Get selling it to mom and dad. We're talking excess Hollywood. Hey guys, it's several days later. So I look a little different, but I put on the same shirt. So as to not confuse you. So where were we? Oh yeah, the big date. So the girls get to the strant. Alex and Jason are of course treated like royalty while Eric and Janine have to sit in the back by the dish people. <laughs> Eric actually only even got them that table because his dad works there. Thanks again, dad. This is really great. Sure, son. What a loser. <laughs> Jason, on the other hand, is straight up killing it with Alex. I mean, I wouldn't want tomorrow's tabloids to read, Janine Adams hates food. And I would hate to read one that says, Justin Timberlake hates good acting. What, do I, I have food? in my teeth or something? No, no food in your teeth, just a real moist looking finger. So both girls have to go to the bathroom at the same time. And normally this would not have been really an eventful thing, but this restaurant happens to be in the process of a remodel and therefore the bathroom is missing this big mirror. I guess during the remodel process, they forgot to paint these heinous salmon colored bathroom stalls and to strip that like dusty pink floral wallpaper that my aunt had in 1981. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. This movie has the ugliest bathrooms I've ever seen. So as you guys probably remember, this is like the iconic scene of this movie. The girls think that they're looking into a mirror because they happen to be wearing the exact same dress and doing the exact same movements. And there's the whole, they happen to be identical thing. I gotta say this scene was kind of cute. Clever, you know, considering that the target audience was probably like 10 to 12 year old girls. I actually think they did a pretty good job with a lot of the editing and making Maggie Lawson literally look like two different people. And that actress I actually thought did a great job too. So uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Back to the Bismol bathroom. So after the girls realize who each of their dates are, they get super mad at each other. Janine does not like Jason Sharp and Alex is just kind of bitter that Eric would go out with Janine and not her. She's like, oh, I see how it is. He goes out with me now that I'm you. When I was me, he just told me to move. So they decide just for a few minutes to switch back, meaning back to themselves, which really confuses the guys because they've been hanging out with... Do you get it? You guys get it, right? It's, it's hard for me to explain. Take this back immediately. Who would order this? You did. So Janine just acts awful. She totally goes off on Jason. She name calls the waitress. You look she runs away and Alex eats uh, calves brains. Mm, what is this? Your calves brains, madame. Hmm? <coughs> Another teen movie with calves brains? Remember Joan from LOL? Coincidence? I think not. In fact, I think the guy who works at Disney and the guy who works at Lionsgate go bowling together. And then while they're there, I bet the Lionsgate guy brags to the Disney guy about how he illegally copyright claimed my video and then rejected my dispute and then took 14 days to reject my appeal even though my lawyer literally typed up a dispute showing him that his copyright claim was false because my video is fair use. Enjoy that two grand, Joel. <laughs> Joel from Lionsgate, I don't know his name. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, calves brain. So then they switch back, but whilst all this is happening, Josh is capturing it all on his camcorder. So Janine and Eric, they got the right idea. They ditch the calves brain straw and they go out and have some fun. <gasps> it's the sacred mock. The mock of the, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that again. <laughs> also, Alex and Jason go looking for meteors. I mean, they may be rocks, but they're not stupid. His voice just sounds so weak. Like a real sissy, like a guy who would probably hide behind Alex if the meteors started pelting the earth. I wanted so badly for him to lean in and be like, Janine. 
Can you move? Oh, how cute. Eric and Janine kiss too. Wait, doesn't Eric have a literal girlfriend, Mindy? Milky Mindy, hello. Well, kids, we have to take a short break, but stick around because when we come back, Alex becomes a bird. <laughs> See you there. Have you been pigging out on peanut butter cups again? No. The Flamin' Hot Cheeto Puffs, what's it to you? So Alex has to walk the runway at this fashion show because remember, she's Janine still. She, of course, completely botches it. This $10,000 gown that she's wearing just completely, dramatically rips apart. She's super stressed, okay? You can really tell by all of these, like, distressed sounds she recorded in post-production. Oh my God. I'm not gonna make a joke about those noises because I am mature. Anyway, she knocks over the other models, completely ruins the entire fashion show, and gets fired from the fashion industry. That's it, Janine Adams will never work for Paul Z again. But I don't feel bad for her at all because she's still a terrible person. You know, Sharon, would you share your pathetic brush with greatness with someone who cares? Has anyone seen a reason to root for Janine yet? <laughs> Anything at all? So one day Josh shows up at Janine's crib where his sister Alex is living because I guess back then you could just show up at an extremely famous celebrity's house and he blackmails her with the videotape. So she decides it's probably a good time to come clean to Justin Timberlake before he finds out. I'm not the girl you think I am. Are you getting the picture? Yeah, Jason, do you see how ugly she is now? Look at the glasses and the ponytail. Gross, gaze upon the hideity. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot, but I did make up a new word in the process. So she gives him the tape her brother took, tells him to watch it, you know, just so he can kind of understand what's happening. And she gives him a kiss, right? As Eric happens to be walking up, I guess Eric frequently visits his high school at nine o'clock at night, but he gets upset, right? Because he thinks it's Fake Alex, meaning Janine. So now both guys are mad at both girls. I can't believe you do this to me. You've been lying to me all along, haven't you? I thought I knew you. Yeah, I thought I knew you for these last two days when we hung out once, but I was wrong. You're just a ponytail glasses super freak. So the girls finally realize they've been ruining each other's lives and they decide to switch back. Janine's like, here, take back these glasses. Set that be. I think that might be the most dramatic glasses exchange in cinema history. That might be the only glasses exchange I've ever seen in cinema history. Anywho, they are back to themselves, living their normal lives again, although things aren't going very well. Alex has kind of lost all her friends because while Janine was being her, she of course was super mean to everyone. Janine's having issues with her photographer. Ah! He tells her to act exactly how she did at their last photo shoot, which he didn't realize was actually with Alex. So he's like, no, no, Janine, be that shy, demure girl I photographed last week. Okay, I'll try. Oh, good! So by try, you mean do exactly what you were doing before and not try at all? <laughs> Got it. Girls, how thrilled were you about this hairstyle when this movie came out? Do you remember this? The straight hair with like the crimped pieces overlaid. Can we bring that back? Okay guys, so it's time for the anticlimactic climax of the movie. At the Greenfield High Fall Ball where nobody's angel is performing. <laughs> Does anybody remember them? They were so good. They had this one song, I think it was called Hey If You Wanna Dance, where the entire chorus was only one note. Hey, if you wanna dance, put your body on the floor with your hot pants if you really wanna dance. I wonder how long it took him to write that melody. It's a wonder their career didn't take off. Look how much the crowd loves them. Hey guys, what was it that you like so much? Was, was it that one note? So Janine actually shows up to the fall ball, posing as Alex, thinking Alex won't be there because Alex is grounded, which I forgot to tell you about. You're grounded. But Alex does show up because she sneaks out. Alex? Didn't, didn't you just? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like a second ago, you looked great, and now you look like maybe you don't yet have the right to vote. <laughs> Anywho, the dance is going pretty well. Eric and Mindy get crowned as king and queen, but then it all comes crashing down when Alex spots Jason across the room. Jason? How he knew to come there to this high school dance? No idea. He was supposed to be in Paris, and when Alex tried to call him earlier in the movie, he didn't answer, so... <laughs> 
plot hole. Anyway, Alex spots him and rushes over to him, but at the exact same time, Janine wants to rush over to Eric. I guess she was planning on like, going to talk to him about getting back together while he's dancing with Milky Mindy. So anyway, they rush towards their boyfriends at the exact same time by some unfortunate miracle. Is that an oxymoron? And the movie comes full circle when they literally bump into each other again. The other students are shocked. Uh, to be at the dance, Ethan. That is some Purple Hearts level post-production voiceover recording right there. It gets even worse when Jason walks up. It kind of sounds like someone's being murdered. <laughs> Did Abe work on this movie? Hey! <coughs> Alex's family also shows up and parks their big old van in the middle of the street. And last but not least, Kathy Lee and Kathy Lee Jr. also show up to more squeals from the crowd. Excuse us, please, excuse us. Sorry, I won't harp on the squeals anymore. I just, I just like to. So the girls explain. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Janine Adams. For the last two weeks, we switched places. What? News that comes as a shock to everyone. Eric is just excited. I went out with Janine Adams? Man, I went out with Janine Adams. This blonde kid in the crowd's like, that deserves the finger lick sizzle thing us 90s kids do from time to time. The parents, on the other hand, they're not so thrilled about the news. You mean we've had a model in our house this whole time? Did she see me in my whitey tidies? <laughs> I'm not embarrassed, I, I just want to know. Jenny, what were you thinking? Quiet! Did it occur to any of you why we did this? We weren't having any fun. Oh, you weren't having any fun. Okay, well in that case, first I was gonna be pretty upset that you literally switched lives and lived in our homes and lied to everybody and ruined each other's futures, but since I now know that you weren't having any fun, all is forgiven. Honey, I am so sorry. And I'm so sorry about the whitey tidies. I guess it's time I realized that even behind a supermodel is a regular teenager that needs to have some fun now and then. And maybe needs to have a whole almond instead of a half. So then Alex apologizes to Jason. You got a lot of better things to do than hang around Greenfield. I mean, I don't. I don't have anything better to do. Wanna go for a walk later? And Justin's like, wait, Alex. Wait, Alex. And the weakest voice he could possibly muster up. Can I ask you something? Would you please? Dance with me. Missed opportunity, Justin. I mean, Jason. She swindled you. The least you could have done was get back at her with the old move joke. No, he's too nice of a guy. He forgives. Eric forgives. The parents slow dance with each other. Monique dances with the limo driver. Little brother Josh dances with some girl. This guy has a little beard. And the girls pose together for this school yearbook, even though Janine doesn't even go here. <laughs> the end. So guys, like I said, there's very little info about this flick. At first I thought it wasn't even on IMDb. Like I typed it in and it wasn't coming up. And then I finally found it under the wonderful world of Disney, which I guess this movie was part of like a series with Disney, I don't know. Most of the reviews were good because this movie is pretty, it's not bad, you know, it's fun. But I found one funny review I wanted to share. This review comes from an IMDb user named Matthew Ryan 2K. The first part of his review is boring, but this part here says, my 13 year old sister finds this movie a pile of poop and she actually enjoys watching Lizzie McGuire. Enough said. <laughs> a pile of poop, eh? I disagree. I think this movie's pretty good. Apart from a few cliches and Yolanda Hadid. But not too big. No, that's too big. The half of that. This is, this is you. My biggest disappointment was Janine's character just being awful, you know? Not having any redeeming qualities. But hey, perhaps we would all be awful, you know, if we too were raised as teen supermodels who weren't allowed to have any fun or even eat a whole almond. Gotta go, guys. I gotta go take two bites only and one sip of orange juice out of a massive breakfast. Join me over on Patreon if you want to see the behind-the-scenes footage from today's green screen shoot. Subscribe to my second channel if you want. See you guys in the next one. Peace out. Oh, let me guess. You're wearing your dad's whitey tidies again? How'd you know? You really think we can pull this off? Why is that a quote that's featured on IMDb? Wake up, New York. Here's a little sunshine to start your day. Good morning, Manhattan. It's 5 a.m. You're still in bed. Good for you. I am. I like this radio DJ. 
way better than Tricky Trent. True story, this is a true story. Uh, in fifth grade, I had no idea who Nobody's Angel was, but I was at Sam Goody with my mom and I saw their CD sitting there and I begged her to buy it for me and she did. And I like learned the whole album. I never ever saw them in the media once. I only knew them from this album I bought. And me and my friend, Jamie, made up a dance to that one song with one note. Hey, if you wanna dance, and you're not even in heaven. And we literally bought outfits for it and had everything ready in the day we were supposed to try out. <laughs> I, just, I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. And she was so <laughs> This is a sad story for other Jamie, but I feel like I walked in and I saw everyone looking at us and our outfits and I got embarrassed and I was like, I don't want to. My mom said I can't. I like made up a story. I don't know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> So this says model behavior is not on Disney Plus because it was produced by Cars Entertainment and Pacific Moon Pictures in addition to Disney. And here I thought Justin Timberlake just paid a bunch of money to have it ripped from the internet because he was embarrassed by it or something. For the first time in my life, I am just happy being who I am. Just Alex Burroughs. Dang! I wish my eyes were actually this big. Wouldn't I be such a doll? Ooh, I'm gonna throw up. That's what friends are for. Keep dabbing, keep wiping, knowing you are missing all the milk. Yeah.